Over the years, there's been debates and outrage to the Ten Commandments being placed or removed on or around public spaces like government buildings or schools, etc. We actually have the Ten Commandments written in stone in the entryway of the church. Instead of getting upset about whether or not they should be in front of public spaces, I'd like to suggest, however, a much more scandalous, a much more challenging, and a much more upsetting list to be carved in stone to replace those Ten Commandments, and that list is called the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5. Remember that scripture. Matthew chapter 5 is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. The word beatitude comes from the Latin word for beautiful, and it means blessed and happy by seeing God. If someone has a beatific smile, that means they're looking at something incredibly good. And similarly, if a person is beatified, it means that the church has declared them a saint in heaven. It means that they are seeing God face to face. Those who practice and live the Beatitudes are imitators of God, and they will become like God, and they will see God face to face in heaven. That's the goal. That's all of our goal. So why do I want to replace the Ten Commandments, those carvings, with the Beatitudes? Well, these ten instructions, they're a strong foundational list. They are necessary and they are important, but they are mostly a list of what not to do. They are the bare minimum for living in a society. But I don't want the bare minimum. I want holiness. Think about your childhood. Think about the rules you had growing up or the rules that you have now for your children. For instance, thou shalt not hit or bite your sister. Thou shalt not draw on the wall with crayons. These are simple prohibitions for preventing damage and chaos. Imagine if these prohibitions, though, were traded in for encouragement. You will be happier if you put your sister's needs before your own. You will be happier if you use those crayons on paper to make beautiful art. The same is true for traffic laws. You can achieve the bare minimum by driving the speed limit, but you could still be distracted and dangerous by eating food or on your phone. I don't want the bare minimum. I want holiness. I can't tell you how many times I've heard before, well, Father, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. I haven't killed anybody. Really? That's your metric for morality. That's not good enough. Simply not murdering, simply not cheating on your spouse, simply not stealing, maybe makes you a good person, I suppose. But following and living the Beatitudes makes you a holy person. When God gave us the Ten Commandments, he came down in a heavenly storm cloud to meet Moses on the mountain. When Jesus gave us the Beatitudes, he climbed up the mountain, he sat down and he spoke to his disciples face to face, eye to eye. Jesus became like us so that we could become like him. Jesus became like us so that we could become like him. And by following and living the Beatitudes, we become more and more unlike him every day. I'd love to spend three hours unpacking each of these Beatitudes, but I'll just let him do it. All eight Beatitudes can be found in the life of Jesus Christ, most severely in the cross and most beautifully in the Eucharist. Take some time with your family this week. Reread Matthew 5 and see if you can spot how the crucified Jesus and the Eucharistic Jesus is a poor in spirit, meek, mourning, merciful, hungry, persecuted, clean-hearted peacemaker. St. Paul tells us, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise, and God chose the weak of the world to bring shame to the strong. Truly, following and living the Beatitudes will make you weak and foolish 
in the eyes of the world, just like Jesus, weak and foolish on the cross. But I don't care about being weak and foolish in the world's eyes. I want to be holy and one day look straight into God's eyes with all of you beside me. Imagine if those same public government buildings who carved the Ten Commandments in stone were more interested in being peacemakers, rewarding the meek, satisfying the hunger and thirst for righteousness, comforting the mourning, and being clean-hearted. Imagine if each one of us carved those eight Beatitudes in our hearts and focused not on the bare minimum, but instead on being holy people, striving to see the face of God at all times. Amen.